Praise God, praise God, praise God. I believe you are blessed and that the Lord is doing a great work in your life and in your destiny in the name of Jesus. I just want you right now to just greet somebody, greet somebody, greet somebody, greet somebody, greet somebody somebody tonight, greet somebody and um, tell them that the Lord is going to bless you. Such an awesome, awesome, awesome Sunday morning. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If your neighbor is not responding, ask them, why is it that you are not looking fine on such a Sunday morning? Bless the name of the living God. Praise God. We are going to have an awesome time in the presence of the Lord. And I believe God beyond any doubt that somebody, after today, you are going to see your life being transformed and your life opening in dimensions that you have never thought, dimensions that I believe you have never believed that God will use you, lift you, or touch you in such dimensions. Praise God. That is the awesomeness of God. That is how awesome God is. Hallelujah. And I believe God beyond any doubt. You know, one of the things that I have come to understand, one of the things that I've come to understand about God is the more you know God, the more you begin to experience dimensions that are inexplicable. Praise God. Praise God. And I believe that is why Apostle Paul comes and he says that I may know him by the and the power of his resurrection. Knowing God is different from just being in God. When you know God, you know how he operates. You know how he moves. You understand his statutes and you understand how you can work out things in the avenues of God. I love it when the Bible says that. To the children of Israel, God showed them his way, his works. To the children of Israel, God showed them his works. But unto those that are, unto Moses, the Bible says, God showed him his ways. There is a difference between the works of God and the ways of God. Uh, I want you to look at it by saying there is a difference between the works of God and the ways of God. And a lot of people get to a place whereby they they have experienced, they have seen the the way the the the, 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 the works of God, which are the end products. But very few people have experienced what we call the ways of God, where you know how things are done, where you operate in a realm, where you detect how things happen around your life and around your destiny in the mighty name and the blood of jesus hallelujah somebody hallelujah somebody god bless you god bless you all right so just greet your neighbor and say neighbor you look awesome in the name and the blood of jesus just look at that neighbor and say neighbor you look awesome today hallelujah neighbor you look awesome today praise god all right so Blessed be the name of the living God. Hallelujah. All right. So God bless you. 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 In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. All right. So take out your Bibles. We are going to get straight into the word of God. I want you to take out your Bibles in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. I want you to take out your Bibles. I believe God beyond any doubt that something uncommon, something unusual, something great is going to happen in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We are going to speak today on a subject I have entitled, I shall break through. I want you to look at three people and say to them, I shall breakthrough. Uh, I can't hear you. I want you to look at three people and say to them, I shall break through. I shall break through. And you can see from the context of that word, breakthrough, uh, it's a confession uh, that I believe that someone has to speak to themselves today to say, I shall break through. No matter what I might be going through, 
I shall break through. No matter what may be happening in my life, I shall break through. No matter what I am seeing from the right, from the left, from the east, and from the north, I shall break through. Am I communicating to somebody? I love it when the Bible speaks about the, 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 a, a certain woman the Bible calls her the the woman with the issue of blood at a time when the bible says the woman the issue of blood was in a period whereby she she was deserted she was rejected she was selected out she was in a place where she was depressed misused uh, out of a place where i believe no one was to help her and the bible declares that while this when she heard that jesus was coming the bible says that the woman looked at her Herself. And I love it because she had a confession to make. She spoke to herself and says, if I only touch the hem of his garment, she saw that there are certain situations that you will not come out until you speak speak to yourself that I am coming out. There are certain things that you might be going through in life. You may not see yourself prevailing and coming out until you come to a place where you speak to yourself and say, I cannot continue in such a situation any longer. I have to come out. Am I communicating to somebody here? Until you get to that place, until you get to that environment, it will be very much, it, it will be you know a complex situation or it will be an impossible situation for you to break through am i communicating to somebody here am i communicating to somebody here my god my god my god this god is a good god all right so 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 breakthrough the the term breakthrough it, it means you know a, a sudden dramatic change a sudden development that is how they they term it according to the oxford dictionary it's a a, a sudden change a dramatic change a development but when you study it in Hebrew, the word breakthrough means to triumph. The word breakthrough means to triumph, to triumph, to overcome. Am I communicating to somebody here? It means to overcome. It means to triumph. That is what the word breakthrough means, to triumph and to overcome. To overcome. To overcome. When you take your Bibles, you realize that there is the word, um, it's, it's nature. Praise God. It's nature from Hebrew, meaning to overcome. The life we live, you realize that as a child of God, we are living in times and seasons where your faith has to be anchored on God. We are living in times and seasons where you have to know where you stand with God. We are living in times and seasons where you do not have to live on borrowed faith. Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? We are living in times and seasons where your walk with God must not be out of excitement. It must be out of conviction. Apostle Paul speaks a statement boldly and says, I am fully persuaded. Where you are persuaded, it's not about excitement. You know who you are working with. Praise God. It's not about feelings. You know who you are working with. One of the dangers of operating and working with feelings is that feelings are temporary. That is why you realize that if you pray because you feel like praying, when you do not feel like praying, you will not pray. But when you know the God that you worship, Apostle Paul says that we pray and we preach in season and out of season. So even out of the season of excitement, we can still pray. Am I communicating to somebody here? Even when we do not feel excited, we pray. We pray. Kabaraskata. Lebarutando kapahadia varata. Libre santo kala. We pray. Whether we feel excited or not, we pray. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Look at your neighbor and say, we pray. 
Luke chapter number seven. We pray. I want you to rush your Bible to the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter number twenty-five. Psalms twenty-five, verse one to three. Psalms twenty-five, verse one to three. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, in you I have unwavering trust, and I rely on you with steadfast confidence. Do not let me be ashamed. Oh, my hope in you be disappointed. Do not let my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, no, none of those who expectantly wait for you will be ashamed. Those who turn away from what is right and do treacherously, uh, treach treacherously without cause will be ashamed humiliated and embarrassed let me know your ways O lord teach me your path david speaks this scripture and i believe when this psalm was written it was in the midst of a situation in life it was in the midst of life and its situations hear me life life if you are living this life you understand that there will continuously be situations there will continuously be predicaments there will continuously be things that you might not understand things that you go through and ask yourself questions you continuously have such things in life because that is life but i want you to understand that as you are a child of god there is something about god that i love praise god look at it i said there is something about god there is something about god that i love that despite what you might go through it does not change him as God and his ability as God in your life. Praise God. David speaks in this scripture and I love it because there are things that David denotes there. David was speaking to God and when David spoke to God, he was speaking about his unwavering trust, faith on God, how he trusts in God. It is, it is unwavering, which means no matter what might happen to him it will not change hear me no matter things might be seemingly being all right or not his faith and trust in god will not change you know a lot of believers get to a place whereby their, their faith changes based on what they are seeing or going through many believers are like that their faith changes based on what they are seeing their faith changes based on what they are going through. Their faith changes based on what is happening in their lives. Praise God. David says, my God, my trust is in you. Your Bible says that those that call upon you, they cannot be put to shame. But I love it when he speaks and he cries out and he says, Lord, I want you to teach me your ways. I do not just want to be a child and to believe in you. I want to know how to walk in the ways that you walk in. You know, stepping your foot where God steps his feet. Stepping your foot where God steps his feet. It's not easy to reach a dimension like Abraham where God calls a person my friend. It's not an easy thing when you reach a dimension like Samuel where the Bible says the words of Samuel would not fall to the ground. Where heaven breaks up what you do and makes sure that it does not fail. That heaven breaks you up and makes sure that you will not be embarrassed. Praise God. Praise God somebody. Praise God somebody. So, when you read your Bible, you realize that David understood that, yes, situations, enemies may rise. But what matters is, what is the backup and he, who is with me? That is what matters. He, he, he had this confidence in God. 
He had this confidence in God. No matter what I am going through, there is a man who is backing me up. No matter what I am going through, there is a God who is watching over me. Look at your neighbor said, there is a God who is watching over me. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. When you read your Bible in the book of Psalms, chapter number 34, verse number 19, the Bible, the, the Bible reads, Many are the hardships and perplexing circumstances confronting the righteous, but the Lord shall rescue them out of them all. Many are the hardships, perplexing circumstances that confront believers and the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. It takes a bold person. It takes somebody who understands how God operates to, one, to, to, you know, to have that, that, that uncompromising belief. To have that uncompromising persuasion that whatever you might go through in life is not permanent. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? Whatever you might go through in life is not permanent. Anything you might go through, there is nothing that is permanent. Whatever you are going through, somebody went through the same thing and they broke out. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and say, I shall break through. Somebody went through the same thing and they broke out. Why will you not break out? Why will you not break out? Somebody experienced the same problem and came out. Why will you not come out? Am I communicating to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? <laughs> Why will you not come out? Why will you not come out? Praise God. Praise God. And it, it, it takes continuous meditation in the word of God. You remember what the Bible speaks to us and tells us about Joshua. God says to Joshua, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But thou shalt meditate upon it day and night, and thou shalt make your ways prosperous. That take this book, take this Bible, begin to meditate on it day and night. Meditate on the scripture day and night. The more you meditate it, there is possibility to prosper. The more you meditate it, there is possibility that your situation will change at first. The more you meditate on it, there is so much high possibility that whatever you might be going through, an answer is coming. An answer is released. The problem is we live in days and times where a lot of people do not really have, you know, confidence. Many people do not really, you know, dwell in the word as much. <laughs> Many people do not dwell in the word, word as much. You'll be like Peter. Remember, the Bible tells us about Peter that when Jesus called Peter out of the boat, the Bible says, he said to Peter, come. He was being called to walk on water. So Peter arrived where he was being called, and the Bible says he began to walk on water. But what will begin to surprise you is after walking on water, the Bible says he removed his eyes, and when he removed his eyes, he saw the storm, and he began to sink. This is why scripture tells us, when you read your Bible, scripture says, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Meaning, when calculating your life, your situations, the, 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 the common denominator must be Jesus. Because if the Bible says he's the author and the finisher, 
It means that you must be at a place that your trust and believing in Jesus when you look up to him. Aborasa Kalataba. When you look up to him, you are in a place that you know that you cannot be shaken. You cannot be moved. Your eyes are fixed on him. And when your eyes are fixed on him, it means he's promises has to be real in you when your eyes are fixed on him no matter what you are going through you understand there is a way there is a solution there is a miracle and there is a breakthrough the bible says you will not allow any temptation that is higher than you to over to overtake you but in every circumstance he has already made a way out somebody say he has made a way out or somebody say we may say Jesus has made the way out. So before you go through that thing you are going through, there is already a way out. So, so where we read the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver them out of them all. God shall deliver them out of them all. Meaning afflictions will be there in life. Oh. Did you hear that? Hardships will be there in life. Being in Christ does not mean you will not go through certain things that many people go through. That's why you are carrying the flesh. Your advantage is that your flesh is raping an explosive spirit. Your flesh is raping a supernatural being. But until your spirit, until your spirit is given power and authority to express itself, you will live like a mundane person and suffer the consequences of carnal men. Praise God. It's not only about confessions. It's about getting to a place where when you are living that life, it's about getting to a place where you are saying, I'm living in God. You are not, it's not just a confession. It is, it is, it is not just a reality. It, 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 it is a persuasion. Praise God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But God shall deliver them out of them all. That hardship can be marriage. That hardship can be the financial situation you are going through now. That hardship can be what you are going through at work, that hardship at work, the circumstances at work. The Bible says there can be many, but your trust must be that there is a God. Look at anybody said there is a God. Look at anybody said there is a God. David spoke in the book of Psalms in Psalms 23. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art is with me. I love that one. Praise God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art is with me. David understood that in certain times, we will walk through the valley. In certain times, we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> but the secret is in walking through the revelation of who is with you is what matters. While at least you are in that situation, you, where your finances are tied, where situations are surrendering you hand down, the revelation you must be carrying is who is with you, who is on your side. That is what matters. Who is on my side? Greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. I might be going through a tough situation now. It is not permanent. Greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. My marriage might be in rocks, shaking and on the edge. That is not what matters. Greater is he that is within me. Makurata halakaba. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Isaiah prophesied and he said, Then the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said say unto the righteous it shall be well with them 
When a prophecy comes and says, say to them, it shall be well with them. It means things were not well. Things were not well. Many believers just want things to be going smooth. I, I spoke yesterday and I said human beings cannot change without pressure. Sometimes the reason you are going through what you are going through is so that you become uncomfortable with where you are. So that you can, the, the aggressive you can rise. So you push to the next level. The aggressive spirit in you can rise. So you push to the next dimension. Certain people will never rise. Certain people will never, will never feel the desire to move the next place as long as they are comfortable. They will not. So sometimes God will have to orchestrate uncomfortable situations. Sometimes God will have to raise uncomfortable situations so that you arise from where you are. So that you arise from where you are. Do you know that if the storm did not rise in the boat where Jonah was, he was going to go the wrong direction. God had to cause a storm to redirect Jonah. God had to raise a storm for Jonah to be redirected. Some of you, that is what's happening right now. God wants to redirect you to the rightful place where you must be. Praise God. Praise God. God wants to redirect you. Because he sees that with the rate you are going, with the rate you are going, <laughs> with the rate you are going, you need to be redirected. You need to be redirected. So he has to force you. He has, he has to push you into, into the right direction. He has to push you into the right place. He has to push you through a circumstance. Some people who never pray when things are okay, I'm telling you, when things are okay, the pantry, the fridge is full, there is peace, money is coming in, some people will never pray. I'm telling you. But the moment things get to a place where they become a little bit tougher, you'll be surprised. <laughs> You, you'll be surprised. The moment you call for an honored prayer, they are the first to be in the room. Yagada, Ibarra, Yagada, Ibarra, Yagada, Ibarra, Higadaka, Yagada, Ibarra, Gadagada. You are wondering, is this the person who was preaching when I was preaching, when, who was sleeping when I was preaching last Sunday? Something is pushing them. <laughs> Something is pushing them. Praise God. Praise God. There is a statement that Job made and he said, Sometimes God brings problems so that we may be close to him. So sometimes problems have to come to certain people because that is the only thing that can bring them closer to God. Without problems, without problems, they can never share. <laughs> without problems, they can never. It, it, it takes problems for them to pray. It takes problems for them to fast. But I decree over your life, in the name and the blood of Jesus, you are coming out of that situation that has made you cry. You are coming out of that situation that has made you stranded. You are coming out of that situation that has made you to become a destitute. You are coming out of that situation that is making you to be on one place for a long time. You are coming out in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise God. All right. Let us go to the book of Philippians. When you read the book of Philippians, you realize that when you are going through what you are going through, there are certain things that you have to understand as a believer. Knowing that God is with you, like what David says, when he says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Meaning the value of the shadow of death is present. It is real. And some people are walking through that valley now. But I love it because he says, Thou art is with me. Understanding that God is with him. He understood that I might be walking through a valley. But God is with me. 
That revelation is easy to speak, but it's not easy until, you know, when you meditate and becomes a reality, until God is personal, is personified on you. You know, there are people that have, have, have grown their relationship with the Holy Spirit to an extent whereby when they pray, all right, listen, when they pray, <laughs> When they pray, they, they, they are talking with the Holy Spirit. They are talking with the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Spirit, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Holy Spirit, let's, let's teach, teach me the Bible. They are no longer just praying. They, they now have conversations. I always say, most of the times we need to get to a place where I believe as believers we need to speak. You know, most of the times when people talk about prayer, it's about people talking to God, sending words. But very few people really have mastered the art of having conversations and their prayer life becomes a conversational two-way street where they are asking and speaking with God and God is answering. And while least I'm on that, many people, the biggest problem is many people would want that kind of a relationship with God when they are in problems. And the biggest problem, if I will speak about a two-way conversation, already someone is trying to, is already at a place where I need to ask God the solution to my problem. <laughs> Even a relationship where every time you are coming with a problem. You know, if you have friends and you are always coming with problems and complaining, they will end up, you know, not, not liking being around you. They will end up not liking being around you. They will end up not liking being around you. Praise God. Praise God, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So, in Philippians chapter number 4, Verse 6 to 7. When you read your Bible in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, Let your prayers and supplications be made unto God. Someone is saying, how are you reading the scripture? You are still opening the Bible. I have meditated on it. I know the scripture. Praise God. Let your prayers and supplications be known unto God. Be known unto God. All right. Let's look for it. Be known unto God. And peace that surpasses all understanding shall guard your mind and heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Oh God. Continue to make your specific requests, requests known to God. And the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart. Mm. That peace which trans, oh God, trans assures the heart. That peace which transcends all understanding. That peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ, Jesus. Now, you realize that that scripture is a very strong scripture because there are spiritual truths that that scripture opens us to. A very deep spiritual truths that that scripture opens us to. The Bible says, do not be anxious, neither be worried. And I always tell us that every time you begin to see anxiety and worry, 
every time you begin to see anxiety and worry, it's a sign of prayerlessness. Every time you begin to see anxiety and worry, it is a sign of prayerlessness. A prayerful person can never get to a place where they cry that I am having <laughs> anxiety. It's impossible. You, can, you cannot be prayerful and be having anxiety. It's impossible. You cannot be prayerful and having worry. It's impossible. It's impossible. The, the scripture has opened us to that. The scripture is showing us. The scripture is showing us. It says, do not be anxious and do not worry. But in all situations, in all circumstances, no, that situation you are going through, the Bible says, do not worry. Men of God, something is happening with my marriage. Things are not well. The Bible is saying, do not be anxious and do not worry. My finances are crumbling. I don't know what to do. The Bible is saying, do not be anxious and do not be worried. I'm not sure about my future. I'm not sure things will work out the way that I want them to. The Bible says, do not be anxious and do not worry. Do not be anxious and do not worry. That's what the Bible says. Don't be anxious. The Bible says, but in everything. Look at it by saying everything. But in everything. But in everything. Let your prayer continue in your prayers. Not only prayers. Continue in your prayers and petitions. And petitions. Now, this on itself shows us that sometimes we even confuse prayer and petitions. Sometimes we confuse prayer and petitions. A petition is that document in which people write and one of the things that you realize is it is the consistence of a petition that makes it to, you know, to prevail. Praise God. Praise God. They will say, let us sign a petition so the more the people sign, the more it has strength. So, if you are bringing a petition to God, it is not a one-day thing. That is why the Bible says continuously. A petition is not a one-day thing. The problem, you prayed about that situation, but you only prayed once. You prayed once and you relaxed. You prayed once and you sat down. Am I communicating to somebody here? You prayed once and you relaxed. You prayed once. When you get to a place you are going through something and you feel anxiety is rising, which means you must get into prayer. Am I communicating to somebody here? Which means you must get into prayer. Stand up at that very same situation. Get into prayer. Hannah saw that the situation that she's going through was too much for her. The Bible says she entered into prayer and Hannah began to pray. She understood Understood if there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. La porata tuala. She began to push in prayer. I will not allow myself. I will not allow myself to be in a place where I'm persecuted and nothing moves. Hannah began to pray. Let something change. Let something move. Hannah began to pray. Child of God, unless you stand up to prayer, unless you lift up your voice to prayer child of God, unless you come to a place where you lift up your voice like Hannah, you bring a petition to God and say I will not come out of this place until that miracle happens. I will not come out of the prayer room until my child is delivered. I will not come out of the prayer room until my job is released. A petition is consistent. A petition
Salvation is not a one day thing. Hannah, Hannah prayed that even a priest was confused. What kind of a prayer are you praying? Imagine if you pray a prayer that even a priest is confused. What kind of a prayer? A person who has been in the temple for long is confused with the way Hannah is praying. Hannah, what are you doing? I am pouring out my spirit. I am pouring out my heart. A dimension where she did not say I am praying. She said, no, I am pouring out. It's a petition. A brother. Meaning I am pouring out. Let my prayer flow. Until you pray a prayer. That you feel that your prayer is flowing. It's not just words being uttered. Until you flow in your prayer. Hannah prayed. When you read your Bible, there was a man called Isaac married to Rebecca. They were barren. There was anxiety and worry also that they might not have a child. The Bible says, and Isaac prayed much prayer to God. Hear me. When you feel you are in that situation, get to a place where you pray. Isaac prayed. Ibra. Much prayer. Rebekata. Much prayer. Ilakata. And the Bible says, Rebecca carried the child. Rebecca carried the child. Am I communicating to somebody? Jabez saw that the situation he was going through was not normal. And the Bible says Jabez got into prayer. Jabez got into prayer and he began to pray. Jabez began to pray. Jabez began to pray. Ah, you tabarata. Every prayer. You see, when people say the prayer of Jabez, people are saying, Lord, enlarge my territory. Hear me? That prayer was a petition. It was not just a, a, a two minutes prayer. Ah. The men took that prayer to the next level. Imagine, imagine. One of the things now, imagine. Jabez prayed a prayer and that prayer has become a model to prayers. The prayer of Jabez has become a theme for conferences. Imagine getting to a place where you have a relationship with God that your relationship become a model of how people should walk with God. Praying that your, your prayer becomes a model of how prayer should be done. <laughs> ah, these men were working with God. Your prayer becomes a model of how prayer should be done. Kabasaya, brekataya, enlarge my territory. That all over the world, everybody will be saying that Jabez prayer, that Jabez conference, that Jabez summit. Oh Lord, enlarge my territory. Oh Lord, enlarge my territory. Only because one man took a petition to God. And break through the into the realm of the celestial. That his prayer was recorded. That it has become a symbol in the case study. Of how a person can break through. And remember the Bible says he was born out of pain. And even in his family it was not that a great family. A model of how you can break through no matter where you are coming from. A model of how you can break through no matter the family you are coming from. Praise God. Luke and Jeremiah say, I shall break through. I shall break through. I shall break through. I shall break through. It has to be a declaration. It has to be a confession. I shall break through. I shall break through. Kaba shakaba. Lado akaba. I shall break through. Does not matter where I'm coming from. I shall break through. Like a barus kataya. It does not matter I failed before. I shall break through. Yaporada. They say there is a case in your family. Nobody can rise beyond a certain level. I shall break through that case. I shall break through. They say you are in a city. In that city, no man of God can break through and have the ministry that impacts, impacts the whole community. I shall break through. 
I love the scripture that says, it was not so until Deborah arose. I shall break through. Whatever you might be saying has not been done because I had not yet manifested. It was not so until Deborah arose. I shall break through. Praise God. I shall break through. I shall break through. Job is prayed. So you need to understand that a lot of people get to a place where they go through these situations sometimes that brings them in environments where they, their life or the enemy, the enemy binds them, where the enemy is finding, you know, is finding an advantage to lose them. The enemy loves it. For him to find an advantage whereby your life is tied. <laughs> For him to find an advantage whereby you, your life is, he has hold your hand like this. Oh, in this coming season, you shall testify. I say you shall testify. So what makes people not to break through? Most of the time is number one, lack of faith. Lack of faith makes people not to get to a place where they break through. When you read your Bible, Numbers chapter number 13, verse 33, the Bible tells us about Moses sending the 12 spies and 10 of the spies came. Imagine going to spy and you come back and you said, we saw the giants and we were like locusts to them. These are men who saw God dividing the sea. And they say we were like locusts. Joshua and Caleb stood in front of them, tore their clothes, and say, let us go. These men shall be bread to us. Lack of faith. Even after seeing God provide in the desert, they still came and said, they shall be bread to us. Which shows me that lack of faith affects your perspective. Lack of faith affects how you see things. Lack of faith affects your reasoning capacity. Lack of faith affects your revelation capacity. When a person does not have faith, even in a place where God must give them a revelation to overcome, they won't. Because they don't have faith. When you read your Bible in the book of Matthew chapter number 17, you realize that what begins to surprise uh, uh, from even verse number 45, G, they, uh, a, a man comes with a child who was demon-possessed, and the Bible says that disciples could not cast out the demon. And in Matthew chapter number 17, verse number, uh, uh, on verse number 45, after Jesus had told them that this kind does not go, in verse 45, the Bible says, they came to Jesus in secret, and they said to him, why could we not cast out the spirit? Imagine they've been with Jesus, they've seen Jesus do miracles, but they can't cast out a spirit. Lack of faith. Lack of faith. You will not break through. Hear me? Your faith must be cultivated for you to go through. You can't. Faith is the bridge to the next dimension. Every man who has ever operated in, in an uncomfortable common dimension with God. There were men who walked with faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. It's impossible. You can't break through if you don't have faith. If you don't have faith, you can't. That is why you must become a voracious lover of the word. Because faith by hearing become a lover of the word. Eat that Bible. Yam that Bible. Eat scriptures. Become, become, become a voracious eater of the word. Become a lover of the word. Let your faith be so unshaken like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who would say, even if the Lord saves us or not, we will not bow down. We will not bow down. Whether he comes or not, we will not bow down. Your faith, you know, certain people have pizza, ice cream faith, which is only activated and is active when things are well. No. Your faith is revealed when things are not well. That is when your faith is revealed. 
your consistent confession in the midst of affliction reveals your faith. Let me repeat that. Your consistent confession your consistent confession in the midst of affliction reveals your level of faith. My communicating to somebody here. <laughs> How you confess when things are not well reveals your level of faith. Praise God. Praise God. The second thing that makes people not to break through it is wrong location. God had to tell Abraham, come out of your father's land. Wrong location can make you not to, to, to break through. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. You cannot be, you cannot be in a, hear me, you cannot be in a shrine and call yourself a prayer warrior. You are in a wrong location. You can't break through. You cannot be an engineer and break through in the field of doctors. Most of the times you realize that we have people that are believers that are supposed to go far. The reason they are not going far, the reason why they are not, bre they are, they are not breaking through is that they are, they are believers living a sinful life. They are believers living a carnal life. Carnal life. Living a carnal life. You are, a you are a believer who's more concerned about the carnal than the spiritual. Yet you desire to see the miraculous. You desire to see the miraculous. It is a waste. To have mascara, but you can't see vision. Mascara, yet you can't see visions. It's a waste. It's a waste of buying the most expensive suit where you are well adorned, but spiritually, when the enemy looks at you, you are not wearing the armor of faith. He can defeat you anyhow. It's a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste. Am I communicating to somebody? It's a waste to be adorned with the most expensive perfume, but you are filthy smelling in the spirit. It's a waste. It's a waste if you are putting on the most expensive lotion, but you don't have the anointing adorned on you. It's a waste. It's a waste. <laughs> it's a waste. Kabarash kalata. Zobarute kabalata. Ebratala kabanakata. It's a waste. It is a waste. Am I communicating to somebody here? It's a waste. Until you come to a place where you arise and say, I am ready to break through. Am I communicating to somebody here? I am ready to break through. Kabarata kalata. I am ready to break through. Somebody under the sound of my voice. For a very long time, you have been seeing the enemy getting to a place where he has been tormenting you. Where he has been making a mess out of your life. But I believe God that tonight, by the power power of the Holy Ghost, as you hear the word, may the Lord come to a place where he sets you free. You are being set free out of affliction. I say you shall break through just the same way Jabez prayed and say enlarge my territory. I decree and I declare your territory is being enlarged in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. Child of God, you might be coming from a place where nobody has ever been known, nobody has ever been recognized, just like Jesus. When they said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I decree you are coming out, child of God, and say, Yes, me, I am coming out. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I am coming out. It does not matter. You are coming from a family where they said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Hear me, it was not. 
not show until you are revealed. There is a God who is in heaven. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. I love what David says. David declares, I says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from above. Child of God, there is something that I know. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, when the Lord turns the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then our mouth will turn to laughter. You don't say the dead God. You say the mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Favor is on your side. Yarus Kalata, I want to look at your neighbor and say, it's my time to testify. I'm not coming out the same, same way that I, 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 I came in. I am coming out with a miracle. I'm coming out with a testimony. I'm coming out with a breakthrough. I'm coming out with a breakthrough. Child of God, this is the season for you to experience favor. This is the season for you to experience grace. This is the season for you to see God manifest in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe God that wherever you are, you will see the power of the Lord being revealed. You will see the power of the Lord being tangible in your life. You will see the power of God changing in your life. I pray in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. That sickness, that disease that has been tormenting you for long, it is setting you through now. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, I decree and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord God of heaven is taking you out from the back side to the front side. I said the Lord shall leave you up. David says, Lord, you are the lifter of my head. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, may the Lord God of heaven lift you up. I say, may the Lord God of heaven lift you up. May the Lord God of heaven lift you up. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, God is not a man that he should lie. No, is he the son of a man that he should repent? Your life shall come out. Your life, your life, your life, your life life, your life is about to experience the hand of God and therefore I speak a prophetic word over your life all shall be well I say all shall be well the same way Isaiah declared and the Lord said to him say unto the righteous it shall be well with you I decree all things are working together for your good you are listening to me your body is not well you are sick in your body. I decree and I declare the Lord is healing you. I said the Lord is healing you. I said the Lord is healing you. In the name of Jesus, you will see the power of the living God like never before. You will see the grace of the living God like never before. The enemy shall not prevail over your life. Every plan of the enemy shall be embarrassed in Jesus' name. The Lord God is God. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. I believe you have been blessed and that the Lord God of heaven is showing you grace. I love you all. May God bless you. May God be with you in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. May you see the Lord touch you, transform you, and lift you on every side. You are blessed. You are lifted. And tell your neighbor, it's my time to testify. This is your season. God bless you. God be with you. I love you all. Have an awesome day.